this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and this week's video is going to be um, kind of a how-to. You see, I have this uh, small form factor Dell Optiplex um, 3010, and I was wondering how XP would run on here. Now, I have run XP before on an Optiplex 3010, but that was on a, a mini tower uh, case, but this one um, is essentially the exact same hardware and it should work just fine. And the main reason I'm doing this is to show you guys how to install Windows XP on a semi-modern computer. You see this computer came out around 2012-2013, uh, which was way um, after XP was uh, being used by most people. Of course, XP didn't go out of support until 2014, but Anyway, this computer was not meant to run Windows XP. And the reason I'm doing this is because you may be wanting to tinker with Windows XP, play some Windows XP era games, but you just can't afford a uh, computer of the, the authentic era because even uh, Core 2 Duo systems are starting to go up in price a little bit. But computers like these, um, the... Uh, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge Socket 1155 Intel systems. They're uh, readily available. Um, in fact, I got this at Goodwill a couple months ago for only $20. It just needed a RAM and a hard drive, and it works great. And so for those reasons, that's why you may want to consider running Windows XP on a modern system. But there are a few hurdles that we will uh, discuss in this video. And so first thing you want to do is um, you, you want to get some installation media to uh, install XP from. And I won't go into how to get the media that's, that could get me suspended. But um, the most common way to do it is put your uh, XP setup CD in the, in the DVD drive and boot from that. However, these newer systems use uh, AHCI mode and while you could disable that and do it in compatibility mode. I recommend uh, just uh, manning up and installing it with uh, proper uh, SATA drivers. And unfortunately, finding the SATA drivers for these systems for XP is very, very uh, tedious and difficult. And plus, you may not, your system may not even have a DVD drive. In fact, this one doesn't. It used to have one, but I wanted to have two hard drives in here, and there were only two SATA ports, so I had to forego the DVD drive. And so, um, installing from a USB stick is the recommended way to go about this. Now, how do you do this? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so how are we going to install Windows XP from a USB drive and have the proper SATA drivers? Well, we're going to need a program called Easy to Boot, and I've already brought up the web page for it. It's www.easytoboot.com. And so, um, and so what we want to do is uh, download this. So what exactly it does is you can put multiple ISOs of different operating systems, different versions of Windows, Linux, uh, even utilities like Hiram's Boot CD, and you can boot from all of those ISOs from one uh, USB drive. And if you're installing XP from it, if you do it a certain way, you can have the proper SATA drivers installed um, automatically. You don't have to uh, insert some kind of weird floppy disk during XP setup. And so this just makes things a lot smoother, a lot simpler. So let's go ahead and download uh, Easy to Boot. We'll click this bu purple button there. And we're going to sc scroll down here and find the uh, link that says Easy to Boot DPMS.exe, which includes 32 bit Windows XP drivers. And that's where we're going to get our uh, SATA drivers from. So we'll go, go ahead and click this right here. And it takes us to another page. And okay, so you want to click the second link right here um, with the uh, DPMS, and this is for uh, Windows 8 or 10, and we'll go ahead and uh, save it. 
and we will uh, run it. And if you're running Windows 10, you might get this uh, little message that says Windows protected your PC, uh, yada, yada, yada. You want to click more info and tell it to run it anyway. Trust me, it's safe. And it's going to extract the files to the desktop. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. And it will automatically come up. Um, it, it's um, complaining that there are no uh, drive letters to be found because that's just because I don't have a uh, flash drive uh, plugged in at the moment. But basically, once you plug your flash drive in, you will uh, select the drive letter up here. You'll click this button right here, and it will automatically do everything for you. And I already have a flash drive uh, set up that I've been using for quite some time, so I will go ahead and uh, plug that in to my system. And we will uh, go to uh, File Explorer, and you'll see two... Uh, partitions on the drive, you want to go to the one that says E2B, go to ISO, Windows, and you'll want to go to your XP folder right here, and from here you'll just uh, drag and drop the ISO you want. I've already done so with several versions of uh, XP, and so that's how you set up um, Easy to Boot. And so now that you have your um, easy-to-boot drive um, ready to go, we'll just plug it into the uh, destination computer and go ahead and turn it on. And we will uh, tell it to boot from the USB drive. And so we will just select that. And we will be booted into the easy to boot menu. And we want to go down to Windows install menu. This is option 5. And we will do um, install XP step 1. And we will uh, choose the ISO. Um, you may only have one ISO on there, so go with that. For this particular system, I'm going to go with. Uh, Number five, which is Windows XP Professional um, with the unofficial Service Pack 4 slip streamed into the ISO. And this is where it's going to uh, detect the SATA driver. And it has found it, and it's uh, getting it ready to go. And so now it will um, go ahead and boot into Windows XP setup. And the cool thing about this is it's almost instantaneous since you're booting off from a flash drive and not a CD. Now normally this is where um, you would have um, a blue string of death if you're installing an AHCI mode but because we have the proper SATA driver, we do not have to worry about that. And so here we are at our uh, uh, partition menu. We'll just go um, about it normally. I have uh, Linux installed on here at the moment, but we're going to wipe that out for now. And because I have a uh, hard drive in here already with files, it's going to uh, try to install. It's going to pick that up as the C drive. That is uh, very, very uh, nasty in my opinion. You don't... T I recommend installing Windows XP or any version of Windows on drive C. It just makes things a lot tidier. But this is only going to be in t a temporary install, so you know, we'll just uh, man up and do it this way. So go ahead and partition it. It's going to install to drive F um, against my wishes.
and this is an SSD by the way it's installing to so um, XP ought to be extra extra fast to boot up and at this point it's going to be uh, your standard issue Windows XP setup it's going to copy the files to the hard drive or SSD in this case and so we'll give that a minute okay it will restart the computer as normal and if all goes well we should see the XP splash screen in a moment okay in this case it's wanting to boot from the easy to boot drive again so we'll just tell it to boot to the hard drive and here we go I think this computer is set up to boot from the USB first look how fast it booted up by the way and this is a uh, common issue sometimes XP will uh, during the GUI portion of setup will not be able to uh, pick up the files from the ISO on the flash drive due to uh, driver reasons so what we're going to have to do is just cancel out this and let setup fail and we will uh, boot back into our uh, easy to boot drive there's a very simple solution to this and so we will uh, let this load back in go back to Windows install and right here we want to go to XP, install XP step 2 for 512 meg plus systems and this will complete the install and reboot from the hard drive basically it's going to load the uh, setup files from the ISO into uh, memory into the system memory that is and so again we want to go with the uh, ISO that we um, used to set up initially and it's going to load in the setup files into the system memory this will take a couple of minutes um, depending on the size of your ISO this one's got SP, unofficial SP4 slipstreamed in so it's going to take a little bit longer than uh, other ISOs would okay it's going to uh, boot back into the GUI portion of setup and hopefully it should work this time I don't see why it wouldn't and here we go no error message it's going to proceed as normal and so we will just let it do its thing for a few minutes and um, take it from there okay we'll type in our information as uh, always and I'm in Eastern time time is wrong because I was uh, running Linux on here and it uses uh, Unix um, time and I guess this is the last thing we have to do before we get into the actual XP desktops so we'll see you there okay we should be uh, booting into XP oh, look how quick that was <laughs> so we'll go through that same stuff as before there's our cool little XP animation we'll just uh, breeze through this uh, type in a name there the keyboard will work <laughs> there we go normally wouldn't take this long um, but that's just because I'm running the unofficial service pack 4 so it has a few extra things to set up at this point okay as soon as we get to the desktop this uh, command prompt window will come up and ask if you want to remove the fear of disk driver you want to select yes because if you don't um, it could result in a blue screen of death which we do not want to have and so now that Windows XP is installed we're going to have to um, get some drivers going on here and as you know uh, it's probably going to be very very difficult to find XP drivers for such a new system well this is where snappy driver installer comes in handy 
it, what it does is it scans through your computer, finds all the drivers, and it, by some kind of magic, I don't know how it does this, it's able to find almost every driver available for your system, even if you're running an antiquated OS like Windows XP. This thing is a miracle worker. And so you want to go to sdi-tool.org, and we're going to click this link right here. And there are two versions you can choose from. You get SDI Full, which has every single driver available, but it's also uh, 20 gigabytes in size, which I, I am going to be using. But for you guys, I recommend going with SDI Lite. It will... Um, it should have the uh, network drivers already in there, so all you have to do is uh, install the network drivers. Once you have it downloaded to your uh, XP system, it'll install the network drivers, and then it will go out and uh, download all the drivers it needs. And so we'll go ahead and uh, click this to download. It'll be in a zip file. So we'll save it there. Let it download. It's a little bit sluggish at times here. That's just my computer. And so we'll, uh, you can just go ahead and extract that to a folder and copy it over to your XP system and launch it, which we will do right now. Okay, let's uh, copy Snappy Driver over to the uh, little XP box here. First, it's got to install the, uh, oh, the uh, drivers for the flash drive. Okay, so let's... Uh, and over here, and by the way, you can see this is where Windows is installed. Drive F. Very nasty. Don't like it, but it's okay for the sake of the video since it's only going to be on here temporarily. Where did I put it? Oh, yeah. Again, I have the version that has all the drivers already on here. All uh, 21.2 gigabytes worth. And we'll tell it to unblock, and looky here, it's picked out just about everything, even down to our uh, USB 3.0 uh, expansion card that's in here. And so we'll uh, select all this chipset stuff, we'll select the uh, network card, the sound card, the uh, HDMI audio, video, USB 3.0 and the rest of the chipset. And the SATA driver, and we'll skip the mouse. And we'll let it do its thing. Uh, it, on the uh, light version, it's, it'll have to uh, manually download the drivers, but in this case, it, drivers are already here. And we can already see right there it's trying to connect to the uh, internet thanks to our network driver I'm installing the uh, video card Oh, and we have sound now. <laughs> and if that comes up, just ignore it. I think we're just about done, and there we are. And you're going to want to uh, restart your computer. I'll unplug the flash drive. And we'll restart. Let's see how fast XP boots up. Almost instantaneous. Well, almost. I thought it was, it, it teased me a little bit there. There we are, full resolution. Ain't that nice? And for some reason that's still popping up and I do not know why. But we'll go into Device Manager. 
and we can see that most of everything is uh, installed except for this unknown device but apparently it's not important because everything seems to be functioning from the video card to the sound card yes this is a quad core system core i5 this again this is way overkill for Windows XP but this is proof that it is possible to run Windows XP on a semi-modern computer with the proper drivers now I say semi-modern because uh, on an ultra-modern computer made in the last couple of years I wouldn't expect it to work but on a computer from this era around the uh, early 2010s maybe even the mid 2010s you should be able to uh, run XP just fine and just to close our video out we will uh, do a quick little mini test with uh, one stop and there we go And that will just about do it for this video. I hope you found this video uh, informative and helpful. Until next time, this is Billy Kaur, signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Kaur, signing off.